I went to mainland China just to spend the summer. I went because there was a great yearning in my heart to make Jesus Christ known, even to the few that I might be able to encounter in a one summer's vacation. However, a lot of things I hadn't really planned on happened. As I moved out into the interior among the untold millions who are still untold, I discovered it was very hard to talk to a man about the future in heaven when he lay there before me, dying, literally dying, for the lack of a piece of bread. I learned then that Dr. Laubach was right. To meet a man's deepest and realest and most eternal need, first you have to meet his present need. on the little people of a nation, the civilian population. It's the women and children that take it on the chin when their homeland is invaded with the lightning rapidity of modern warfare, burning villages, the smoking ruins of little homes, roads clogged with families fleeing with their few earthly possessions. These are the all too familiar byproducts of war. doubles as a war correspondent, but that's exactly what our next guest has done. He is Dr. Robert Pierce. He's a man who's traveled around the world 35 times. He's been in and out of the troubled area of Vietnam ever since 1952, when it was still known as uh, French Indochina. He's just recently returned from South Vietnam, loaded with information, very strong opinion, and some very good film. Welcome to today, Dr. Pierce. Thank you, Phil. A pleasure to have you here today to look at some of the film. But let me ask you first, how you as a clergyman became involved uh, there, and particularly as a war correspondent? That's a bit unusual. <laughs> well, actually, I went to uh, China at the end of my preparation for the ministry just to spend the summer. But while I was there, I found very dedicated but obscure people who were really meeting human need and uh, serving with, with a dedication that made me feel they deserved support, they needed help. They were there, but sometimes unsupplied with what they needed. And uh, it, became, it became my conviction that my duty, both as a servant of Christ and uh, the best thing I could do to meet this need was not to start something myself, but spend my life getting behind people who've already proven they're going to do something about need, whether anybody helps them or not. And there are such people in the world. And that's how World Vision got started for that matter.